for the low, low price of $39.99, you can get yourself Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, assuming you have a Quest 2 or 3 or the Quest Pro, as this is only a standalone title for Meta's headsets and not a PC VR title, which would open it up for use by other headsets. So, should you drop the 40 bones on this game? Well, stick around and I'll tell you what I think. I have decided to break this up into a pro section and a con section, and at the end, give my final thoughts. So, at the top of the pros list is its lock picking system. The moment I experienced this, my brain clicked, and I'm like, yep, that is what a VR lock picking system should look like. The only other game I've experienced lock picking in is Skyrim, and I was not a fan of how they did it. And maybe there are other games out there with some other system, but I don't know of them. So until such time as I do learn about those games, whenever I think lockpicking in VR, I will think of this system. In a nutshell, you're manipulating two picks, one for each hand. The right lets you place the circle in the hole and it clicks. And when that happens, you manipulate the second pick to move you to the next level of the lock, then back to the first pick to line them up, rinse and repeat. It really felt natural when I was working these picks. Moving on to another pro in this game, it's combat system. You're starting off with your hidden blades for assassinations and can I just say, it is satisfying lining up a target and finishing them off with these blades before they even know you're there. Then with your first mission, you collect your sword. So now it's a swords work game. So blocks, parries, etc., etc. And all in all, you almost feel like you're a real swordsman duking it out with other swordsmen. Combat really got fun for me though, when they introduced me to the throwing blades. With just a flick of the wrist from the shadows, your blades away and the target drops. Initially, my only issue was you can only carry two blades, so I was constantly trying to find ways I could carry more with me, until I discovered you can retrieve your thrown blades. That discovery was an absolute game changer for me. From then on, it was flick wrist, target down, retrieve blade, or sometimes it was two wrist flicks, two targets down, retrieve both blades. And even other times, it, I would be in the process of retrieving a blade only to have another target happen upon me. So I would pull the blade from my old target and throw it at the new one and downing them. Then run over and retrieve the blade from that target. You're in the same situation with the bow. Once you get one of those, you can only carry four arrows, but you can retrieve your arrow. So you find yourself strategically thinking of your shots and only taking ones where you're sure you can get your arrows back. All in all, I really enjoyed the combat system and more specifically, the mixing of stealth with the combat system to take out targets without alerting others to your presence. I'm going to move from the combat system to the climbing system now. And just for clarity, I'm separating climbing from the parkour, which this game has, but in my mind, it is a separate beast than the climbing. And for me, we'll fall in the con section. Climbing in this game is a lot of fun and you can almost climb most things. If it has jagged edges or whatnot, you can climb it. The only thing I couldn't climb was like an absolute flat concrete wall. And even then, while I couldn't actually climb the wall, you can grasp at it and slow your descent and if you come across some jagged edges, you can then grab onto those and stop your descent. Climbing really clicked for me when I came across a temple where you were climbing all sorts of things as you make your way through it. It was in this temple that I discovered you can be climbing a section of the wall, and if you come across a gap you need to cross, you can fling yourself across the said gap and grasp something on the next wall and continue on, but be careful, you can miss your grasp and fall to your death. Another beautiful thing about climbing is that it lets you climb to great heights that you can then jump off like this ship's mast into, of course, a hay bale, which leads me nicely into my next pro, the stealth in this game. When you land in said hay bale, 
you'll notice your body is a white transparency type of thing. This means you're invisible and can't be seen by the enemies. You can hide like this in hay bales, of course, but also bushes and even crowds of people. Basically anything that when you move into them where your body changes like this, you will be invisible to the enemy. Combine this with the moving while crouched and hiding behind things, etc, etc, and attacking from cover when the enemy is unawares of your presence makes for a really fun playstyle. Something else this game does really well is its settings. More specifically, its settings for comfort in VR. They basically have every variable you can think of to basically address most people's motion sickness in VR. What's better? They have some presets already set up in case you don't fully understand all these things. You can just select the preset that works for you. As someone who had to get over motion sickness in VR, I fully understand it's a real thing, but unfortunately not all games develop for it like, in my opinion, they should. So it's always nice when you see all these options in a game. Maybe moving forward this will become standard, we shall see. There are more pros I could list, but without making this video unacceptably long, I need to leave time for the cons. So these were my top pros, moving on to those cons now. Moving on to that first con, the game's really, really, really slow to get going. Like really slow. Mainly because they basically turn the entire first character you play through into a tutorial. You find yourself slogging through one tutorial after another after another. Here's how you use your sleeve daggers. And here's how you use some of your sword stuff, etc, etc. On and on and on. The first time I played through that first section, it took me about three hours to get through it. And I'll be honest, if I hadn't bought the game for content on my channel, I may have been tempted to return it. It was that slow. Just for reference, the return window for a meta game is less than two hours of play time. So basically, in theory, a game has about an hour to an hour and a half to hook a player, lest a player decides it's not worth it and returns it. And no, I was not hooked within that first two-ish hours, but I slogged on anyways knowing I was planning to do a review of the game. My advice, don't try to work the tutorials into the main gameplay, and instead have it as something separate that a player can choose to skip. Now mind you, if I want to play through the game a second time or a third time, which I did do, I'm stuck playing through all those tutorials all over again, which I did have to do. This initial slow roll startup is made even worse by the insane amount of load screens in this game. You don't want to go through that door, do you? Well, load screen for you. You want to go through that hatch? Awesome, we'll give you another load screen. How about going back to the menu to change the setting? Tell you what, three load screens for you. One to take you to the menu, then you're done in the menu, one to take you halfway back to the game because why go all the way back to the game and then a second to confirm you do indeed want to go back to the game. What the hell is that last screen even there for? After a while I'm like, oh my god, do these load screens never end? And no, they never end. They're at the entire game, everywhere. Why is this a problem you ask? Because it's VR and every single load screen they throw at you breaks your VR immersion. I'm confident even a flat screen gamer, which I am one of those as well, would have found all these load screens totally unacceptable. And for a VR gamer, it's much worse. Those two are my main beefs with the game. And to be fair, after you suffer past those two to three hours of the tutorial sections, the game does get interesting, but also you can never get past those load screens. Let's move to the next con, the NPCs. And I'm going to lump graphical details in with this because they kind of all go hand in hand. Can you say clone copy NPC? Because I swear they only had like 10 or maybe even less NPC templates that they used. And they use them over and over and over again. And I'm running through a crowd of 30 or so NPCs and I'm seeing the same three faces over and over and over and over again. I swear, I would run up to a crowd of four and they would all have the same face. And maybe the shirt on one's a little different color, 
or the pants on one is a different color. If you're legitimately trying to create an immersive VR world that hooks players and draws them in, nothing breaks that more than the player running around seeing the same three faces or the same five faces or same whatever number it was over and over and over again. And another thing, it's lazy ass game development, seriously. Which brings me nicely to the next gripe, the graphics. I've heard people really talk up the graphics on this game and not to be the naysayer here, but that great graphics is highly situational. What I mean here is if you're standing on the balcony looking out over the city and you're too far away to make out much detail, the graphics look pretty decent. But the moment you move in a little closer, the lack of detail breaks it all down. I'm going to use baskets of produce and flower pots here as examples, but when you actually look, the lack of detail is in many places in the game. So you see a vendor on a street corner with baskets out displaying their wares, and you're like, hmm, let me walk up and see what they are selling. So you do, and you look into the basket, and what do you see? Not apples or carrots or pickles, but apples pattern cloth or a carrots pattern cloth, or a pickles pattern cloth. Basically a pattern cloth for whatever produce or whatever is supposed to be in the basket. And you're up the street from a pot of flowers and they look pretty so you move up to smell the flowers. And as you get closer, you realize you're looking at a 2D flower. Some might say these details aren't important, but I disagree. If you're trying to create an illusion of something, it's the details that sell it. And that's what VR is, an illusion of another world. And here's where the PCR master race in me comes out. I'm not saying PC VR is perfect, but what I will say is when one sees what a VR illusion can be, and then you're presented with what it is in this game, the lacking is obvious. I'm mainly coming down so hard on the graphics, not because for standalone they're bad, because they're not, they are pretty decent for standalone, but as a counter to others trying to sell the amazing graphics line. If you have to couch your amazing graphics with for standalone, they aren't really amazing. So my final word in this is to temper your expectations here. Don't expect amazing graphics, but think of it as decent graphics for the standalone platform. This video is already getting longer than I like, but I want to touch on one more con, the whole parkour thing. Does this game have parkour? Well, if by parkour you mean the character runs long and vaults and whatnot over stuff and things and whatnot, sure. But as the driver of the bus, all you're doing is pressing and holding the A button and letting the machine do all the work. Sure, when you jump off ledges, you're responsible for grabbing the next and things like that, but overall, the experience didn't really feel very VR-ish. I'm not sure what a parkour VR experience would feel like. All I know is this wasn't it for me. It felt more like an advanced jump button. Yeah, that's it. It has a more advanced jump button. Hey, which is cool. So, $40. Worth it? To be honest, it felt more like a $20 to $30 game, and $40 felt like it was pushing it. But I'm not going to say with certainty it's not worth the $40. There is fun to be had in this game, so long as you're willing to suffer through the exceptionally long tutorial phase. And now that I'm past said phase, I plan to finish the game, and I'm sure I'll have fun. But I'm not certain if there's much replayability in it. So, that's also something to keep in mind. But I want to hear from you. Tell me in the comments, have you played this game? Am I way off with my assessment or more on than off?